Hello everyone, I'm Yan Nai from Chongqing University. Today I will present our work on, pho on photo localization, improving deep learning based photo localization with this sampling. My presentation has four parts. With the rapid development of deep learning, researchers have proposed deep learning based photo localization. It tries to uh, use the neural networks to learn a photo localization model reflecting the relationship between a be the behavior of a statement and the program failures. This figure shows the process of the deep learning based photo localization. Um, it collects and abstracts the long term information of the test suite on each program as a matrix representing a statement covered or not covered with, with a passing and failing or failing test result. Next, it, it used the neural networks with the matrix as the training dataset to run a trained model and construct a sensor sized testing dataset. That is the one hot vectors to test the model for evaluating the suspiciousness of each segment of being 40. I'm sure in this figure, passing test cases and failing test cases are two classes for training the low localization model. However, it is difficult to construct failing test cases in reality. Therefore, the number of passing test cases is much more than that of failing test cases. It leads to the class imbalance problem and the bias to the feature run from passing test cases. In deep learning, the class imbalance problem of the training set cause causes negative impact on the classifier. It will affect the accuracy of the known localization model. Based on the above analysis, we propose an approach to address the, the cost imbalance problem in the deep learning based photo localization. Our basic idea is that data sampling is effective to be applied in deep learning to solve the cost imbalance problem, and we can resample those beneficial data for photo localization. There are three things we need to figure out. First, what data are beneficial for photo localization? This research has shown that the failing test cases are always beneficial for photo localization and we need to resample failing test cases. Second, the, we have different resampling techniques. Which one is proper for photo localization? We, we usually have three major types. Undersampling, sampling with the creation of artificial data and oversampling. Undersampling randomly removes the data from the majority class in order to be the same number as the minority class. It is harmful for deep learning based photo localization because it causes much more information loss. Something with the creation artificial data will generate a new artificial data similar to minority class and fix the same level of the minority class to the new artificial data. However, in the software testing and debugging, we cannot simply conclude that a test case similar to the failing test case should be the failing test case. So we cannot simply fix the labels of the similar new data as the same as the minority class. These failing test cases are beneficial. Oversampling is randomly sample with the replacement that is cloning the minority class. That is, for example, failing test case. It may be useful for improving photo localization. Finally, how many data should be resampled? Prior research has shown that a class balanced test suite is useful for photo localization. Thus, we oversample failing test cases until failing test cases have the same number as the passing test cases. This is on the above on idea and the solution. We, we propose an iterative over sampling approach for photo localization. This figure shows the algorithm. Our algorithm will clone the entire iteratively clone the entire original failing test cases and add uh, and add all the cloned failing test cases to the test suite until the number of failing test cases equal to that of passing test cases. To verify our approach, we choose the widely used programs and the fourth level of the art deep learning based photo localization approaches. The table shows the information of the subject programs. This figure shows the exam results. Exam is defined as the percentage of sediments to be examined before finding the actual 40 sediment or lower value means better. We can observe the results of that. The curves of the techniques with using the sampling 
are always be above the ones with those tactics without using the sampling. It means it means the exam results show that our approach improve, improves the localization effectiveness. For detail improvement, we adopt uh, RMP to evaluate our approach. As shown in the figures, the RMP score is less than 100% in all programs except two programs. This means that our approach significantly improves spot localization. To further verify whether a balanced test suite is better than unbalanced test suite, we use our resampling approach to clone different ratios of failing test cases, where the ratio is the theta is defined as the number of passing test cases divided by the number of the failing test cases. Based on the results of the table, we can observe that the balanced test suites are always Perform better, performing better than the unbalanced ones, being consistent with the previous research. Let me conclude our work. We propose an iterative or sampling approach, and the results show the potential of using the sampling to solve the problem of class imbalance in problem. In future, we plan to add the contests to the learning process and open our current work to more large size programs. Thanks for your listening. Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to the second day of SCPC. Uh, thanks for uh, listening to the video by one. Uh, well, let's start with uh, the Q and A. Uh, up to now, there are no uh, chat, so I will uh, start asking uh, some questions. And uh, the first one, basically. One, if I correctly understood by reading your paper, you have experimented with uh, models relying on various metric types, like uh, features related to the stack trace, features related to source code, etc. Did you observe a different behavior when considering the metric sets in isolation? I mean, did you experiment with uh, individual set of metrics, and uh, uh, if so, what are the results? How? Uh, what can you tell us about that? Oh, pardon. Uh, I I can I can't uh, answer all the questions. Uh, uh. Okay, so basically, if I correctly understand, uh, you didn't uh, obs well, you didn't experiment with the individual sets of metrics. That's fine. Perhaps this can be a nice uh, addition to uh, better understand whether uh, your crashing fault residence prediction model uh, can improve uh, and uh, uh, to what extent. Um, the other uh, curiosity I have, uh, in your opinion, what's the use case scenario where you can envision developers using uh, an approach like the one you proposed. In other words, you envision this uh, approach uh, working in a continuous integration pipeline rather than, uh, I don't know, developers uh, should use it uh, uh, in their uh, IDE during the, their development activities. Oh, uh, is that mean the uh, usage scenarios? Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, just uh, wait to this search just for the uh, for the, the, the theoretical uh, uh, research, mm, it's mm, that's Hello. Is there anybody there? Don't know. Terrible. 